Hello, so it was requested that I do a video sort of on surplus that's actually useful for everyday use. So I'm going to include both police and military stuff in this, and this list could go on forever. Um, so I've just narrowed it down to a load of things, but basically use your imagination. If you can buy something as surplus cheaply and it fits a certain role, it will probably be good for you if you need it for a certain role. So I'm going to go through it in no particular order, but let's start with both camouflage clothing and raincoats. Uh, so there's a British DPM raincoat, Gore-Tex one. So if you're buying army surplus raincoats, some of them are very good and hard wearing, but often, like all surplus, they're much, much cheaper than buying a brand new Gore-Tex coat. Lots of new Gore-Tex coats are well, uh, you know, well above 50, 60 pounds, generally above 100 pounds. Lots of these army ones are 20 pounds or under, depending on where you buy it from and the condition, obviously. Um, but you can get you know, a very good raincoat that's basically new um, with a camo pattern on if you wanted it. I think some militaries just have them in like plain colours as well. Um, you know, that are much cheaper than if you were um, trying to buy one brand new. So that's to start off Gore-Tex raincoats and the same goes for camo clothing. Um, you can get lots of very good hard wearing outdoor clothing that's camouflaged. Um, you know, lots of good sealable pockets in it and everything like that. Um, you know, fairly cheaply. Or as if you were to look in a, like a walking store, you know, like a sports store, at some of their similar outdoor sort of trousers, lots of them are very expensive in comparison. So lots of military clothing is very good for its cheap price and everything like that. Um, I'll also mention while I'm on this bit boots, because you can get, again, very hard wearing military boots. Um, again, sometimes in brand new condition, sometimes in barely used condition. Um, cheaply. I've had military boots that have often lasted me longer before ripping apart than like very expensive civilian sort of style boots. So that's a thing to bear in mind. I think Doc Martens might be the exception to that. But lots of the brands that, you know, you spend nearly a hundred pounds on a pair of boots, I've had some of those, you know, be torn up by my feet within a year of using them for walking. Um, you know, an outdoor activity, whereas some of the military boots I've had have lasted years before they start sort of falling apart on the inside because, you know, they have to meet a requirement for how good they are. So, you know, boots and clothing in general are very good for military stuff. Obviously, I'll mention it again while it's in this video. Personal security, everyday use of getting um, like an old armoured vest or a flak vest, stab protection and some bullet protection. Um, I've done lots of videos covering these Kevlar vests, so I don't really want to go into it loads now. But, obviously, if you live in somewhere where it's not particularly safe, you're going to spend loads of money if you want to buy brand new body armour. If you buy second-hand police or military body armour, often it's much, much cheaper. So, you know, for a slight percentage of it not being as good as brand new armour, you've got something that will still give you adequate protection, because you're not really going to use it in a war zone. Um, another thing... Lots of little pouches and things like that that you can get. This is a canteen carrier. But, um, you know, there's lots and lots of little pouches that you can get to attach to belts and sort of jackets and things like that. Obviously, a lot of these are designed to clip onto body armour. But just very good for general storage and everything like that. So, if you wanted to get something to, you know, use in those conditions or whatever, lots of these little pouches are very, very good for that. Even if you're using it as some sort of tool. Um... I think you could put some tools like screwdrivers in there. If you were working on a roof or something, you could have that on your belt with a load of tools in here. You know, take them up and down the ladder using something like this because, you know, it seals and obviously it's going to be fairly secure with stuff in there with it in there. So, you know, lots of just little ideas like that. Going back to clothing, there's lots of sort of magazine pouches and things like that that you could repurpose to hold other things. Just going back to uh, clothing, M65 jackets and all the similar sorts of jackets, these are very good. I love M65 jackets and I've done videos on them before. Um, I've got one in my car with the liner out at the moment because it's the summer and I don't really want a liner in the jacket during the summer for obvious reasons. Even though today is sort of rainy and horrible but I'm glad it's raining because it's cooled everything down and watered all the grass. Um, but yeah, M65 jackets for me are kind of like an all year round jacket. You can get them in loads of colours and camo patterns. But in general, it's like a jacket you can take the liner in and out and they're very robust and good. Some people prefer other jackets, but you know, the M65 is what it is and I really like them. Similarly, uh, speaking of pouches, you can buy military backpacks very cheap. This one I think was about £10. I can't remember how much I paid for it. This is the one I keep meaning to set up a rough sleeping bag in and haven't got round to yet. 
um, but you know the point is that you can buy military backpacks of very big capacity and lots of useful things sometimes very similar to you know like other branded ones that aren't military surplus ones but a military surplus one's like 10 to 20 pounds not 60 to 100 pounds for the um, you know like sports brand ones basically gas masks respirators I've gone over these loads of times before but the great thing about a gas mask or as a respirator is you can use it when doing housework if you're working with chemicals that are hazardous you know you can have it with your filter on doing that if you're drilling or um, sanding or grinding anything like that which is putting lots of particles into the air you can use it with just your particulate filter on there you know it'll give you eye protection from sparks and flying shards of stuff um, you know and it also stop you breathing in the hazardous dust so there's loads and loads of uses if you think where a paint spraying respirator or anything like that could be useful a surplus gas mask could probably do all the same jobs better if you don't mind something that's a bit bulkier and heavier but you know there's lots of times I end up using mine for random stuff because I've got them all around and why not right we'll go over helmets but riot helmets are uh, very good if you just want something for head protection now I don't know if I can really recommend these for like motorcycle use and stuff like that because I know some riot cops do have like combined motorcycle riot helmets but um, you know I don't know how well these would protect your head in a crash because they're not designed to really you know protect you from um, a motorcycle crash or something like that but the point is these would be very good for head protection so with all helmets, although as I said they're not specifically designed for it, the military and police type ones, I imagine if you're at somewhere where you risk of banging your head on stuff, you could use one for that. You know, um, would it really matter if you're wearing a steel pot helmet or a Kevlar helmet rather than the construction helmet? As long as it's not stuff where the construction helmet is specifically designed to, you know, protect you from a brick falling from really high up. But if you're just at light risk of banging your head, a helmet like this could be very practical. Obviously if you did some sort of security job where uh, you needed to supply some of your own security equipment, a riot helmet would be perfect for that. Because, um, you know, lots of security guards do buy the old armour as well for, like, cash carrying purposes. Helmets like this are used for cash carrying purposes. So there's lots of other uses for them. Uh, pretty much, you know, anything you can think of where a helmet might be useful, you could do that. I imagine even if you're strimming the grass, or, you know, doing a uh, yard work. This is going to give you much better protection than a lighter construction helmet with a visor type ones, you know, for people cutting tree branches, working with chainsaws and things like that. The same goes for the body armour, that's going to give you some protection if you slip with a knife or, um, you know, a chainsaw or something like that. So, um, you know, um, right helmets and stuff like that would be good for that. And similarly, yeah, I'll just show you as well, that's the Mark 7 helmet, but... Again, that would be something that you could use in a similar situation. Like I was saying to the right helmet, obviously this one doesn't have a visor on it, but you know, if you needed a helmet for something, especially if you wanted to take all this off so it looked like a much more of a plain helmet, as long as it's not something where you need a very specific designed helmet for it, like some sort of crash helmet, these could probably be used, you know, in a very useful way to uh, give you protection. So there's that. Um, you know, I'm sure there's other uses of these as well that I've not thought of. Like all this gear as well could probably be used for airsoft or paintballing type stuff. But <clears throat> there we go. Also, I've not got any out for the video, but NBC suits, lots of those are very good in extreme cold weather because they trap heat inside. Because you know, if they let stuff through, they wouldn't work as an NBC suit. I've said this before, but I found NBC suits are absolutely brilliant when you want something for um, extreme cold weather use because they trap the heat inside so you know rather than putting on several jumpers in you know like minus conditions you can just put an NBC suit on with you know shorts and a t-shirt on underneath or whatever else and they actually keep you very very warm and then obviously if it was colder you could then put extra layers on under the NBC suit but you know there we go that's the video um, hopefully this has given you some ideas but yeah, the point is, as long as your imagination is good enough, you can think of very good utilities for lots of this surplus stuff. Whereas, um, I'm saying the main thing is just how much cheaper lots of this surplus is. If you were to, um, you know, try and buy a lot of this stuff new, a lot of it is triple plus the price. Um, even sometimes it's cheaper to buy surplus full-size gas masks than it is to buy the most basic 3M mask with filters. So that gives you, you know, you know some idea of the difference in price. So, there you go. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas. As I said, there's plenty of more things that could be used. If you do a particular job, 
or you know hobby and you think I need some sort of protective equipment or just clothing for it there's probably a surplus area you can look into that's you know what you're sort of thinking of and then look into that particular surplus like the clothing for it the helmets whatever else the body protection and you can probably find stuff that covers it but as I said if you're out hiking why not buy a military backpack designed for carrying heavy equipment on patrols generally it's going to be much cheaper than if you're buying a um, you know like really expensive actual rucksack from a sports store that will do it that's not to say all surplus is necessarily superior though because there have been times where like with that backpack down there I've got my dad's got a really good hiking rucksack you know all the sort of chest straps to take load bearing I would personally prefer that but to buy a new one of those they're very very expensive whereas the surplus one is good enough for what I'm going to really want it for you know cheaper so that's so my point is it's not always to say sometimes yes there will be times you will need the very specialized excellent equipment but most of the time you can get away with um, especially if you're just doing something casually uh, getting surplus that's far good enough for what you need but you know you're not going to waste loads of money on it especially when I think when it comes to body armor as we've said before because the risk is that you know if you're at a very low risk of being stabbed or shot anyway or you know what I mean like you're not somebody who's specifically a target because you're just somebody out and about so if somebody mugged you and stabbed you you're at much lower risk than the policeman who might specifically be targeted or security personnel um, buying their armour is you know much more effective than going to a site that sells armour to civilians specifically at a massive price inflation as we've said before yes over time Kevlar does become weaker but if the threats it's meant to encounter are much more severe than you're going to you know, encounter, even if it does lose some protective ability, the much lower threats you're going to face, you know, it's still going to easily cover you for. So, as I said, hopefully this video has been informative and everything. Um, you know, it really does depend what you want the stuff for. But overall, yes, you can get away with using surplus at a fraction of the cost of paying, you know, hundreds of pounds for some of the same gear made for civilians specifically.